Well, fancy meeting you here. We're back with Measures of Position Part 2. Da da da! Quartiles and deciles. So, this is what we're going to be doing is finishing up the section 3 4. Quartiles and deciles. I know it sounds complicated or like you're speaking Roman, but it's not that hard. So, let's get going with it. Quartiles, uh, just like we have four quarters in a school year, they're measures of location denoted by Q sub 1, Q sub 2, Q sub 3. Q sub 4 doesn't exist, so they only do it by Q1, Q2, and Q3. Divides a set of data into four groups, so as you know what a quarter is. And about 25% of the values falls in each group. So the first quartile separates the bottom 25% of the values. So you take a fourth of your values and and separate it, and that's quartile one, the first quartile. Second quartile is the same as the median. Those are identical to each other, and it separates the bottom 50% of sorted values from the top 50%. The third quartile separates the bottom 75% of the sorted values from the top 25%. Let's take a visual look at this, shall we? Oh, yeah. So here's the quartiles, 1, 2, and 3. Divide ranked scores into four equal parts. Ranked means we're going to have to put our values in order from low to high. So here's our minimum value and our maximum value. And what the quartiles are is it, it just takes and sections off your data into four sections. And so you can see here's quartile 1, the minimum to the Q1, then Q1 to Q2, which is your median, and Q3 to the maximum. So there's your four parts, all righty? Now, one thing I want you to notice is that Q1 is the middle point, middle value of the minimum to the Q2. So basically, to find Q1, all you have to do is take the median of the minimum and the median. So halfway between these two data values is Q1. Halfway between Q2 and the maximum is the Q3. It's the median of the values between Q2 and the maximum. I'm trying to kind of show you, you're taking the median of the median, that's a shortcut. So although quartiles can be computed using a formula, computing percentiles like P25, there's an easier method and that's what I was just trying to allude to. Step one, you sort the data from low to high. Step two, find the median. That's the Q2. Once you have the Q2, you find the median of the values that fall below Q2 and that's Q1. And step four, the find the median of values that fall above Q2, that's going to be Q3. Alrighty, so let's take a look. Find this. this. This is an example of real data. So here's the data set, and they want you to find the quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3. Now these are going to become important when we get to the next section and you have to do box plots. So our first step is to sort the data. So pretend like you did that. So it would be 5, 6, 12, 13, 15, 18, 22, and 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wouldn't you know it would be an even number? So. We had to find the median. If you remember, to find the median, you look at what's in the middle. Well, there's no middle value because we have an even number of data values. So we're going to take the middle, would be between the 13 and the 15. You can do that in your head. You know it's going to be 14. But if you need a formula, it would be 13 plus 15 over 2, which is going to end up to be 14. Step three, find the median of the data values less than 14. So if you look, here's the data values less than 14, 5, 6, 12, and 13. And I wrote them over here for you. Of course, it's an even number again. So we're going to be looking for that value that's halfway between 6 and 12. 6 plus 12 is 18. 18 over 2 is 9. So that's Q1. Yeehaw. Now all we need is Q3. So for Q3, we're going to be looking at the values that are greater than 14. That's 15, 18, 22, and 50. So if we take those, the, we want the ones that are in between 18 and 22, right in the middle there. So you take 18 plus 22, divide by 2. That's 40 over 2. Or since we're from St. Louis, 40 over 2. And you'd end up with 20. So there's your Q3. Bada boom, bada bing. What could be easier? Not much. All right, let's talk about interquartile range. Doesn't this sound like we're speaking rocket science? Ooh, find your quartile, decile, percentile, and interquartile range. Blast off. Okay, another word for inter, uh, the way they abbreviate interquartile range is IQR. And all that is is the difference from Q3 to Q1. Now, interquartile range, you're going to be, um, 
important for finding outliers, it's the range of the middle 50% of the data. So 50% of the data that falls in the middle around the mean is the, in the interquartile range. And it's used to identify outliers, like I said, so it is important. So write that down. Deciles, deciles. Their measures of location denoted D1, D2, and so on, and decimal is base 10, so deci is 10. So it's 10 equal groups with about 10% of the values in each group. Thus, they can also be found using the formula for percentiles. For example, D1 would correspond to P10, D2 would correspond to P20, and so on. Q1, Q2, Q3 also correspond to percentiles. You could do P25, P50, and P75, respectively. And D5 is the halfway point, because it's 5 out of 10. So to uh, correspond to P50 and Q2, thus it is also the median. Bingo, that goes on your sheet. All righty, here's the measures of positions that we have so far. Standard score or Z-scores. Remember, that is to tell... Uh, your relative standing to everybody else. That's what you use it for. It's the number of standard deviations that a data value is above or below the mean, and that's the symbol Z. Percentile is the position in hundredths that a data value holds in the distribution. That's P sub N for, you know, like P sub 50, P sub 25, and so on. Decile, there's got to be a joke about deciles. I just can't think of one right now. Position in tenths that a data value holds in the distribution, and that's D sub N, and then quartile, Q. Hey, by the way, if you're ever playing Scrabble, decile, quartile, those might be good uh, names in Scrabble, good words in Scrabble. Anyway, this position's in position in force that data that a data value holds in the distribution. Splits your data up into four groups. That's Q sub N. Bada boom, bada bing, you probably have to pause it to vote write all that down, but that's what it is. Outlier, DDD, it seems like I think of Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome when I see outlier, like he is an outlier, we must kill him. I'm an Indian outlier, half, half Cherokee and Choctaw, my babe, she's Chippewa. Okay, that doesn't go with this. An outlier is something totally different. It's an extremely high or low data value, which we have heard more than once. When compared to the rest of the data values, it can strongly affect the what? The mean and the standard deviation. And it can strongly affect this one, you don't have to write down, but it can strongly affect the scale of a histogram so that the true nature of the distribution is totally obscured. In other words, you maybe have to change, go up so high or down so low with the outlier that it, it skews your data, it makes the data appear different. It is above Q3 by an amount larger than 1.5 times IQR. You remember what IQR is? IQR, interquartile range. So when you do Q3 minus Q1 and you multiply it by 1.5, it could be above it or below it. So it's above or below an amount greater than that. It's outside. And remember, the interquartile range is the 50% of the data around the middle. All right. So let's do the procedure for identifying Indian outliers. No, just outliers. Step one, sort the data and find Q1 and Q3. Step two, find the interquartile range. How do you do that? You subtract these two values, Q1 minus Q3. Step four, multiply the IQR, this number that you found in step two, by one and a half, 1 1.5. Subtract, that should have a B in there. Subtract the value in step three from Q1 and add it to Q3. Step five, check the data set for any data value that is smaller than this guy or larger than this guy. So these intervals that you found, step four is finding the interval that it would be, most of your data should be between. If it's not in that interval, bada boom, bada bing, you've got yourself an outlier. So let's look at this guy. We already messed with this data and we found Q1 and Q3 already. So it's already sorted. We can start with step two. And we found Q1 was 9 and Q3 was 20. This was from our last example. Now we need to find the interquartile range. So what we do with the Q1 and Q3 is we subtract them. So you'd have 20 minus 9. That's going to be 11, 11, 1, 1. I love that number. Step 3, multiply 11, which is our interquartile range, or IQR. Notice they're pink. 
by one and a half. So if we take one and a half times 11, remember you keep the first and last number and add them together to get the middle number. So you know you're going to have 165. One decimal place makes it 16.5. And step four, we're going to subtract the value from step three. That's this 16.5 from quartile one and add it to quartile three, which is purple. This is all color coordinated. I did that just for you guys. So the first part would be 9, which is Q1, minus that guy, 16 and a half, the IQR. That's going to give us negative 7.5. Negative numbers need love too. And you're going to have to add it to Q3. So we're going to have 20, which is our Q3, plus 16 and a half, to give us 36.5. These numbers in blue here, that's our interval. So we're going to check the data for any data that falls outside of the interval from negative 7.5 to 36.5. Do we have a winner? Ding, 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 ding. 50. That guy is bigger than 36.5, so it's not in between those two numbers. So it's an Indian outlier. No, it's just an outlier. I'll probably get in trouble for saying Indian. So it falls outside the interval from negative 7.5 to 36.5. So it is considered an outlier. An out and out liar. Okay. So let's see what else we got. Outliers can occur for several reasons. They didn't want to pay. No, I'm just kidding. Measurements are observational error. Okay. They really did love you at the time. No, that's a different outlier. Measurements or observational error could cause an outlier. A recording error could cause an outlier. Or the data from the subject was not in the defined population. For example, they tested all the kids in my algebra class, and it was supposed to be all the 8th graders, but I had one 7th grader. He didn't fall into the population, so that's what they mean. And then it might be legitimate and occurred by chance, but the probability would, of that would be small. So in other words, something weird happened and it actually is a, a real value. What do you do with an outlier? Well, kick them to the curb. You know, to the left, to the left, in a box, to the left. No. What to do with outliers? We're talking about outliers that are numbers way outside your data range. What do you do with them? If it occurred by an error, you try to correct the error. If not, Omit it entirely. Don't even play with it. <laughs> play. If it's legitimate, decide whether or not to use it. There's no real hard rule about this. So you get, to, you get the choice of using it. In a normal distribution, that's a bell curve, any values more than three standard deviations from the mean are suspicious. So they are probably outliers. So that's another reason you need the old standard deviation. That's it folks and that is part two of three four and you're ready to roll. I hope you're having a great weekend or if you're doing this in class I hope everything's good. Bye.